Finishing the day on the S4 sponsor stage is Four Scout. Please welcome Brian Proctor and Sandeep Lota to the S4 sponsor stage. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Good afternoon. Appreciate you guys spending uh, your last session with us. My name is Sandeep. I'm a global engineer with Four Scout. And uh, today we're going to give you a really fun talk uh, with my co-host Brian Proctor here. Hey guys, I'm Brian Proctor. Um, great to be back here at S4. A little background about me, former asset owner for 13 years and actually a uh, customer of our OT monitoring product, Silent Defense. So really happy to be uh, upstage or on stage with you all today. So let's talk about the talk and why we want, wanted to give it and kind of what the agenda is. So we're really gonna be focusing on trends in the field that Sandeep and I are are seeing. So we're gonna be talking about really the leaders in this space and what kind of forward thinking trends we're seeing and specifically how Forescout's platform really can help jumpstart your maturity levels in your operational technology environments. And then to wrap it up, we are gonna be talking about some future proofing ideas. Um, if you're gonna invest in OT technologies, you need to future proof um, your investments because you don't wanna make the wrong decision. So. I'm going to hand it back to Sandeep and kind of highlight some of the trends in the field Excellent. that we're seeing. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate it. So as Brian mentioned, him and I spend a lot of time with clients around the world. And there's a number of trends that we've started to pick up on as a company over the past year and a bit. You know, one of the most important things we talk about is asset owners, clients like you guys are now looking for ways to both actively and passively identify devices on your network. We've kind of reached the point where passive technology has exhausted itself and we found that there's still dark pockets within people's networks. So one of the interesting trends is asset owners are now looking for tools that can targeted actively communicate with either infrastructure devices or end devices to be able to feed back some asset information and health telemetry. Pretty important trend. One of the next things that we've been seeing is that operations teams are looking for tools to help them do things smarter and quicker. This is all about operational efficiency. Most of the people in the room here can relate to the fact that budgets are shrinking, workforces are shrinking, you're running out of more people that need to do more tasks. So we need to start looking at smarter ways to get things done. So one of the things that we've seen from that perspective is um, tools that can help improve reliability, first and foremost for the business, Secondly, shorten root cause analysis and investigation. We need to find things and we need to find them quicker. And thirdly, helping with real-time monitoring. So for any given point in time, current or historical, being able to understand what's on the network, what's been there, and what are the health implications of it. Another interesting trend that we've noticed is that clients are looking, shifting to more uh, automated and scalable solutions. We work with some of the largest global companies and to deploy solutions at scale quickly for organizations like that can sometimes be a challenge. So that's an interesting trend that we've seen that's taking more of a priority and focus. And finally, clients have already spent a lot of money investing in other tools within the organization. So they're asking for the ability to bi-directionally integrate these tools to make all parts of the platform smarter. Already, we've been doing for decades one-way unicast transmission of error-type messages via, via things like syslog, right? That's great, and that worked up to a certain point. But now, we want to be able to share things more and ingest information as well as sending it out. So that's a very important trend that we're also starting to see. At the end of the day, the big takeaway is that leaders in this space are maturing their capabilities simply beyond detection and response. And that's pretty much what we're here to talk to you about today, is what comes after detection and response. I'm going to turn it back over to Brian now. Yep. So Sandeep talked about this shift. Uh, so Four Scout, if you didn't know, acquired a company called Security Matters. And it's a company that started in 2008. And the first kind of focus was detection, right? threats and detection. We want to detect everything, detect, detect, detect. So that was really the focus starting in 2008. And in 2012, obviously, they, it kind of shifted and say, hey, we're detecting things. We also need to help our responders, right? I mean, you're getting these alerts, you're getting these events, we're sending up to the SOC. How can we help them from a response capability, right? 
But now, um, or, or, or back in 2016, which we saw with the S4 detection challenge, really a focus on the identify function within the NIST CSF. So asset inventory, asset classification, that was a big use case kind of driving investments in this passive monitoring space or in this OT cyber security space. Um, but when we're working with some of the largest deployments around the world and, and most advanced customers, they're actually looking beyond just identify in, in, in those three previous uh, uh, focus areas and moving to more protection and recover. So they're looking at platforms that really provide value in all five of these areas because these are critical functions. And as Sandeep said, this is why we're up here talking. So we're going to be drilling into the, each pillar. We're not going to tell you what each pillar is and, and, and define that that's boring. This is S4. Let's be technical. Let's, let's drill into these things. We're going to talk about these advanced use cases in each of these pillars and specifically how Forescout is uh, helping our, our, our clients meet their needs. So drilling into the first uh, function of the NIST CSF, let's talk about those advanced, those advanced use cases, right? So first of all, um, they want to triangulate kind of the physical location of the, of the devices, right? Everyone can do passive monitoring and see a map and see an IP address. But when push comes to shove, you also want to know where is that physically in my environment? Meaning, what switch is it connected to? What port number is that connected to? Very, very valuable data sets are a piece of information to have. Because when push comes to shove, you need to do something or take action or maybe upgrade the firmware. Maybe you need to physically plug into that device over some physical port. You have that, that piece of data or that data set at, uh, at the tip of your fingers. Also, crowdsourcing um, classification. So um, a lot of these tools out there, you know, they have a heuristics models that, that are kind of built in. What if you can leverage the industry as a whole and crowdsource asset classification, right? There's all these new devices, IoT devices coming on your network, new OT devices, whatever it is. You know, a lot of our kind of forward thinking uh, customers say, hey, can we have the community help us out with asset inventory and classification? Um, and then automating risk assessments, right? And, and tailoring those to your methodology. Um, you all have a different ways of how you classify and define risk. So what's really nice is, is, is people want to do this quicker, right? It, it's, it's very costly and expensive to send a team out to a site and do an assessment. You want results now, hey, what are my highest risk assets from both a security and operational perspective? And then lastly, um, serial assets. Uh, I worked in the utility vertical for 13 years. There were serial devices when I left. There were serial devices 20 years before I joined. And there's going to be serial assets 20 years from now. So you can't forget about those types of assets. And Sandeep here is kind of going to be drilling in about how we can really work uh, with serial assets as well. Perfect. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, so within the first function of the CSF framework, talking about identify, there's a number of solutions that Forescout has that directly map to the advanced use cases Brian talked about. For starters, the ability to leverage integrations with your existing infrastructure devices. So when you want to talk about triangulating where exactly a device lives, we do that by going out and talking to all the infrastructure devices and pulling things back like ARP and CAM tables to understand exactly physically where devices are connected. We do that out of the box today. One of the important things Brian talked about is crowdsourcing um, with respect to asset classification. So as of today, we've got over 11 million devices in our device cloud. We harness the power of everybody globally to make us smarter and everyone else ultimately. So that's something that's really important to look for. How many device classification signatures are you able to actually identify within your environment? Brian talked about something really important earlier with expediting and automating risk assessment. This ties into things like risk scoring and risk calculations for both operational and security components. We have an out-of-the-box framework today that automates that risk, risk scoring and allows our clients to customize that as well because we realize, just like you guys do, one size does not fit all. So what one client considers 
to be a certain severity could absolutely vary between uh, location to location or even amongst different clients. So we have the ability to customize that out as well as automate it. And finally, um, Brian talked about serially connected devices. Yeah, they're not going anywhere at all. So we have the ability to passively or actively obtain that asset and vulnerability and threat and health information from these devices that are serially connected. The next uh, function within the framework is protect, right? So from an advanced use case perspective, there's a number of really neat things that we've been discovering over the past years in the field. Things like continuous device assessment. Not just at a connect point in time, but continuous device assessment. This is something that our clients are definitely looking at. And the ability to control and allow or disallow devices entering into their control networks in the first place. So this is an interesting trend that we see unfolding. The next thing that's very apparent is the automated responses. Again, this talks back to working smarter, not harder. Operational efficiency. The more we can automate, the better off everybody can be. So one of the big things that the professionals and, and people like you are looking for out in the field is the ability to automate response actions. And just to be clear, an action could be something as benign or simple as an alert or an email being sent out, or we can take it all the way to the other extreme of actually implementing a control, knocking a device off the network, shutting down a switch port, putting someone on a quarantine or a guest VLAN. So these are the types of things customers are looking to do. Segmentation is huge. That's on everybody's mind these days. We talk about segmentation, and as a matter of fact, we're having a lot of discussions about micro-segmentation. So from that perspective, clients are absolutely looking for something that they can help to simulate what segmentation is going to look like, and further to that, validate that their segmentation strategy isn't going to break critical parts of a process or a communication flow. Finally, once clients get a grip on what segmentation should look like, the next phase is actually implementing it. So the next big ask out there from the industry was to make sure that your tool or your product can automate OT segmentation as well as provide audit functionality. So I'm going to turn it back over to Brian here to talk about how Forescout can help with that. Yeah, so Sandeep started off about you know checking a device's security posture and allowing it or taking some type of action. Um, if you didn't know, Forescout's really been a leader in something called NAC or Network Access Control. You heard it, you heard it here first. This is already being done on the wireless side, on the IT side. OT NAC is going to be blowing up in the next two to three years. I mean, NAC on the IT side, I believe, personally, is probably more difficult than it is on the OT side. You know, you only have a certain set of devices and probably a handful of vendors. So OT NAC, I believe, do, being able to really, if you connect a device to the network, whether that's an engineering workstation to an RTU, Relay, PLC, doesn't matter. You know, obviously, we're gonna, once you connect it, check, hey, is this, is this approved? Do a variety of checks. Um, let's just say Windows device login is it patch is it running your endpoint technologies you know is is its version running to the expected level we can do these types of checks and as Sandeep said take whatever action you would like something like hey open up a service now ticket and tell desktop engineering hey you need to patch this device or take some type of action as Sandeep said like kick, kick it off the network or put it in a VLAN obviously in OT environments those actions you want to be you know pretty careful with what you do and not impact uh, the operation. So that's that's very key. And continuously do this. We don't, don't do it the first time. We, we continue to do this over and over so you really have a clear understanding of what your current risk posture is in your OT environments. So you talked about integrating with technologies. We're going to really drill into this later. But we can integrate with whatever technologies uh, uh, you've already had investments in, whether it's next-gen firewalls, whether it's endpoint detection technologies like CrowdStrike, whether it's um, uh, threat and vulnerability management scanners, like if a device comes on your network and hasn't been scanned in 30 days because you scan every 30 days, we can initiate a scan and say, hey, don't let it on the network until we're done with our scanner. We can do these types of actions and automate that. Automation is key. You don't want to create more work for people. 
And lastly, segmentation. Um, we've all tried, we've all had segmentation projects and it's always going on. Segmentation, whether it's in IT or OT, uh, are very, very difficult. So we provide a graphical matrix that says, hey, my PLCs are talking to my HMI and maybe they're also, for some strange reason, talking to directly to my historian or, or my IP camera. We provide a graphical representation so you can see these flows. And because we're integrated with your network infrastructure, as well as your next-gen firewalls, we can simulate and then automate, if you'd like, the segmentation process. This is very, very huge time-saving. If you've ever been part of a segmentation project, you know, writing, understanding firewall rules, and then you turn it on, and there's always firewall rules that didn't work. Well, what if you simulate that and let that run for a week or a month and, and saw kind of the those violations, you can do this and automate this. And with a simple click of a button, you know, automate that, put ACLs on a switch, or like I said, uh, reconfigure your next-gen firewalls. So from now moving on to detection, obviously this was one of the first kind of functions um, that, that OT cybersecurity started on. So what we're really seeing is people moving away from alerts and really focusing on TTPs. I think TTPs, obviously, a lot of talk about that, as well as MITRE and, and the attack framework. Um, so that's a huge, huge thing, because you all want to focus your resources on those events and situations that are further along the kill chain so you can potentially catch bad things uh, uh, ha happening. So really focusing and moving away from alerts. Yeah, alerts are great, but really focusing on TTPs, behaviors, and, and, and a common nomenclature, right? And that's, congratulations to MITRE, really happy they uh, came out with the ICS MITRE tech framework. That's awesome. Um, feeds, let's talk about threat feeds. We all have threat feeds. You probably have some from the government. You probably have some commercial ones. You're getting indicators, you're getting this and that. Um, a lot of our customers want to say, hey, I'm getting these indicators. I want to push these out to my detection technologies in real time. So when these new threats are known, I can understand whether or not uh, um, I'm seeing these. And so it's all about getting almost near real time detection and understanding if you're seeing these indicators, if you're seeing these kind of threat feeds. And then historically, looking back in your analytical data and say, hey, now that we know this, this, this TTP is associated with this malware, or this threat actor, or whatever it is, you then can look back in your previous logs and say, hey, we actually saw this a week ago or an hour ago. And so that's really helpful information for their forensics and IR folks. And then lastly, trying to find kind of threats before they're known in the community. So um, um, a lot of our kind of forward-thinking customers are saying, hey, is someone spewing a bunch of malformed SMB packets or some type of malformed data, maybe it's Modbus, maybe it's whatever protocol it is, that can be very hazardous in an OT environment. You know, it could be exploiting a, an, an, an unknown vulnerability. It could be just trying to break something. So these leaders are looking for, hey, I want to know if there's a bunch of malformed packets going on. Maybe it was an accident, bad protocol stack from a vendor, or maybe it's someone trying to do something. But they really want some visibility into that. So Cindy, if you want to talk about how we help in these areas. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Brian. So from a detect function, there's a number of great stuff that we can do right out of the box. Um, first and foremost, Forescout has the largest industrial threat library dating back to over a decade. We're definitely not new in this space. We've been doing this for a long time. And the depth and breadth of our threat library certainly reflects that. Brian brought up a really good point earlier, and he was talking about threat feeds. We all have threat feeds from a multitude of different sources. Well, out of the box, Forescout is able to ingest sticks, uh, indicator messages, so you can help augment we've, what we've already got built into the platform. Another thing uh, that was really interesting that Brian talked about is being able to look at historical analytics and historical information. So our, pro our platform has a forensic time machine, if you will, built into it that allows us to look at historical um, data points and metadata as well as analytics and run those analytics against current or fresh exploits or IOCs. So we give you the ability to historically go back and see if you would have been impacted or are impacted by newfound vulnerabilities. The malformed packet detection engine like Brian talked about, pretty important um, in my mind and I see this firing off all the time in client sites. Um, just exploiting 
protocols and taking advantage of protocol vulnerabilities or weaknesses that can be exploited to cause further communication impacts and interruptions. And finally, um, the ability to customize all of these threat hunting capabilities by leveraging our extensible scripting engines and backend framework. You guys love to script. We love to script. It's a perfect combination. So really, um, I know, and certainly Brian and I have had the chance to work with some massive global giants who are doing some pretty intricate scripting work to get inside and look at payloads and help make decisions about health of devices as well as uh, pull out telemetry asset information. The next pillar we move into is respond function within the NIST framework. Um, we got some really good advanced use cases out of this area, as a matter of fact. Um, coming back to what we talked about earlier with bi-directional integrations with other security technologies, um, you know, things like Brian talked about, about earlier, possibly interacting with a CMDB to create a ticket if we detect some sort of anomaly. Or we can integrate with other infrastructure partners, firewalls, things like that. Another very interesting use case is clients wanted the ability to take their OT data that they're getting out of the OT data and enrich it with IT data sets. So the ability to start combining and understand contextually more about these assets and being able to do that from a single pane of glass. Of course, operational efficiency has been first and foremost on our mind. We've talked about this a few times already. Again, automating responses to threat or alert conditions. If a policy is violated, we want some sort of action. Again, whether it's a email notification, whether it's a ticket creation, or whether it's a quarantine VLAN assignment, we can start to get into um, these automated workflows, which is what a lot of our clients are asking for. And finally, of course, reducing the response time to investigate things, that's critical. Um, being able to not only understand when something of a threat nature happens, but being able to quickly assess it and obviously act on it is huge. So these are the things that we're hearing about in the field. Yeah, so how do we help with the Forescout platform? Um, really, what kind of separates us um, from, from, from all these folks is um, we, we talked about it earlier, just one-way data transfers. Like, I'll send syslog to your sim. I'll, I'll send asset inventory data through a RESTful API. Yeah, that's great. You're just feeding kind of one-way communication. What if you get bi-directional communication? So our team at Forescout, we have over, we support over 70 integrations, bi-directional bi -directional integrations with a variety of different platforms. So what is, why is that important? Because we can... We can have we have use cases and, and value propositions that really no one else in this space really has. That's that's a, that's a very very key capability. Let's talk about ITOT. Really bringing those things together. Um, I. We believe we're the first ITOT platform. Uh, we were the first, or Forescout was the first to really make a large uh, acquisition in this space. There's been some more recent ones. Um, so we've got a good 14 month uh, jump start on, on a lot of these people. And we really believe that you know having an ITOT platform where we're really bringing data sets from both sides together into one is a huge, huge value proposition. We talked about segmentation. Um, we talked about that earlier and being able to really enforce those policies and, 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 and what kind of nightmare that, that is. And lastly, um, you know, communicating with technologies that do enforcement and blocking and, uh, and alerting technologies. We, we also talked about that earlier, which is really everything from firewalls to micro segment to endpoint micro segmentation technologies. We can really work with those techs so, so we can make your life of segmentation a lot, a lot easier. So if something does happen, we can respond very, very quickly. So from a recovery standpoint, this is the last one. Um, um, kind of some of the advanced use cases we, 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 we saw for this uh, pillar of the uh, NIST CSF. Um, automate deployments and upgrades of your OT security products. This is, this is huge. If something goes bad, you need to recover. You want to be able to automate and quickly deploy or upgrade your security technology. Push a patch, push a new detection, do something. So Sandeep's going to kind of drill into how we're doing that very, very quickly with one of the largest customers. 
Um, creating baselines and profiles for all communication flows, right? Something bad happens, uh, maybe you, you cut your link between IT and OT, and, and, and maybe you want to start building those firewall rules back out slowly. So having that, the, the analytics and knowledge of those data flows between IT and OT and, 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 and starting turning those those fire rules back on. Very, very key to understand those baselines and those data flows. And then lastly, having a historical knowledge of kind of the history of your devices. Um, you know, when you recover some, from something, wouldn't it be great if you knew, um, you know, this relay was this make and running this firmware version and have a history and log of when those versions changed? Because when you want to recover, you want to recover to a safe, safe point. And so you can have those logs and look back. And so Sandeep's going to wrap up here with kind of how we're, we're helping in these areas. Yeah, thanks, Brian. So when it comes to recover, the final function within the CSF framework, um, this is pretty important. This is getting you back on track to the last known good recovery point when things were operating as they should be. Um, one of the big things from our perspective is that we leverage container virtualization to expedite deployments and upgrades. In the event of disasters, you're not tied to an expensive piece of hardware that needs to be purpose-built or purchased. Um, we're not tying you into a particular operating system or a VMware ESXi server. Um, we virtualize to the point that we can have rapid deployments on other pieces of bare metal, essentially to help customers get back to their recovery point quicker. Um, case in point, Brian and I have a client that we're working with who has the ability today to literally push a button and within five minutes, they've got a fully functioning sensor deployed, communicating back to our command center, ingesting traffic from that location. And we've got that can down to a five minute interval. So that's when you want to talk about recovery point, these are the type of things that are critical to the business. Another important thing from a recovery perspective, how do you know where good was? We have to understand by visualizing traffic flows and understanding ports and protocols, et cetera, what good looks like. So then when we do run into a disaster event and we have to perform a recovery, we can understand how far back we need to go to get to where good was. So understanding and baselining and profiling is key to getting you back to that recovery point. Another important component of a recovery is simply validating the consistency of your asset inventory and devices on the network. In the, in the incident uh, or having a disaster of some sort, Part of the recovery plan is saying, hey, do we still see all the things that we're supposed to see? Pre-disaster, we had 100 devices on the network. What do we have in place now that can tell us how many of them are back on and what state are they in? So that's critical from a recovery perspective, having the ability to do that. And again, Forescout's platform does that today out of the box. Finally, having an audit log of device firmware and software revisions. Again, what did good look like? we can roll back to any point in time historically and look at an asset's information and understand what firmware it was running, what software it was running, and so on and so forth. So in the event that we do need to pull back and do a recovery, we can look at that data and ensure that we have consistency to that point in time when things were working well. I love your Canadian accent. I just love it. Um, so wrapping up, so what are some recommendations? What, what can we leave you with? So f first of all, if you're looking to invest in kind of an OT cybersecurity space, you really want to look at products that help you build maturities in all of those different functions of the CS CSF. That, that's critical. We work with a lot of clients who get audited every year by a third party, and they measure their maturity across the, the CSF. If you're really looking to build capabilities, why not look at a technology and a platform that really increase your, your maturity across all of them versus just focusing maybe on two of them. Um, Segmentation. I know I talked about how OT NAC is going to be a big thing. OT segmentation um, continues to be a big thing. Um, we're all, you know, struggling. It's a very hard task to to segment OT environments. Right? You don't want to impact operations. Um, we believe we've got an amazing platform to really visualize all the flows and really help you reduce the cost of of segmenting those flat OT environments. 
One of my personal kind of important takeaways is, is choosing a platform that's really cross-functional across various business lines. Here at Forescout, we believe our platform is not just built for the cybersecurity team. It's also built for the operational team and the network team. It's about having a cross-functional platform across all those different business lines and creating a common operating picture. You want people to be, have the same understanding, talk the same nomenclature, and really have the same visibility and, and situational awareness across your OT environment. So it's about bringing people together. It's not about buying a tool for security. It's really about you know, creating one team. And then lastly, um, we're all in the risk management space, right? We all want to reduce risk. So implement you know, impact and automated risk scoring. So those are our takeaways. We really appreciate you guys coming out. Sorry, we've got the red light, time's up. So no questions, but uh, have a great S4 conference.